Basic sewing stitches on most machines include the straight stitch, zigzag, blind hem, and multi-stitch zigzag. We'll show you how to use some of these basic stitches in this part of the program. However, most of your sewing will be done with the straight stitch. To sew a basic seam, place the fabric under the presser foot with the edge of the fabric at the right lined up with the seam guideline you want. The top edge of the fabric should be under the needle area. Before you step on the foot controller to sew, put the presser foot lifter down. You are now ready to sew. Step on the foot controller and sew a few stitches. Press the reverse sewing control to sew a few stitches in reverse. This will secure the seam to keep the stitches from coming undone. Release the reverse sewing control to sew forward again. Do the same procedure to finish a seam. To remove your sewing from a mechanical machine, turn the hand wheel toward you or counterclockwise until the needle is in its highest position then continue turning it counterclockwise until the needle just slightly begins to go down again. Most electronic machines automatically bring the needle to its correct position for removing fabric from the machine. Raise the presser foot and then remove your work from the machine. The zigzag stitch has many applications. It is very popular, however, for machine applique. In this case, the zigzag stitch width is set according to the look you want for the project. The stitch length is set to a very short stitch length setting so that you don't see fabric between the stitches. Use a satin foot when doing machine applique because it has a groove along the bottom that allows dense stitching to pass freely. The multi-stitch zigzag has many applications but is often used for repairing tears. To do this, Place a reinforcement fabric on the back side of the tear to stabilize. Select a wide width setting, but select a fairly short length setting. Sew over the center of the tear. Now stitch again along each side of the tear to secure. Most machines have a selection of stretch stitches. These stitches are mainly used to sew fabrics with an elastic quality like those used to make activewear and swimwear. Most mechanical machines with stretch stitches require you to set a lever or dial to the stretch stitch mode in order to select the stretch pattern. Electronic or computerized machines automatically set the stitch for stretch sewing when the stretch stitch is selected. Let's take a closer look at a couple of these stretch stitches. The overedge stretch stitch makes a seam and seam finish at the same time. It's great for projects like activewear when it's important that the seams stretch with the fabric. Sew the seam, then trim the excess fabric when finished. The honeycomb stitch works great when applying elastic to all sorts of projects like garments, home deck, and even crafts. Narrower widths of elastic can be placed through the hole of the presser foot so they extend out toward the back. Hold the back end of the elastic with one hand and pull the other end toward you, stretching as you sew. Decorative stitches are mainly used for fabric embellishment. Some basic stitches and stretch stitches can also be used decoratively. Sewing different combinations of stitches can create interesting effects on clothing, crafts, or home deck projects. Various types of thread can transform the way stitches look, or you can combine stitches to create border effects or surface texture. Use a fabric stabilizer when doing decorative stitching to prevent the stitches from tunneling or distorting. Let's take a look at some ways to do decorative stitching. By using a heavier weight thread, like 12 weight cotton or top stitching thread, you can apply beautiful texture to your stitching. Just be sure to use a larger size needle so the thread will pass freely through it. 
You can also stitch over various types of ribbons and trims. Try a polyester or rayon thread for the stitches to have a nice sheen. Sew directly over the trim or sew along each side of the trim depending on the effect you want to achieve. Mirror image, available on some models of electronic or computerized machines, allows you to flip some decorative stitches on your project. Not only does this offer greater creative possibilities, but mirroring the stitch can make it easier to sew the stitch in hard to reach areas. You can give your stitches a three-dimensional look by sewing with heavier threads or silk ribbon in the bobbin. Use things like ribbon floss or two millimeter silk ribbon in the bobbin and use all-purpose thread or polyester thread in the needle. Hand wind the ribbon onto the bobbin, then place the bobbin into the machine. You can thread it into the bobbin case tension for a tighter look or bypass the bobbin tension for a more relaxed appearance. Apply a stabilizer to the wrong side of the fabric. Mark the stitching line on the stabilizer because you will sew with the right side of the fabric facing down. Use a large eye hand needle to bring the ribbon to the wrong side, then tie off to finish. There are many styles of buttonholes available on machines today, but the most popular style is the bar tack buttonhole. Buttonholes can be sewn in one step, four steps, or manually, depending on the machine model, using the appropriate buttonhole foot. Check your machine manual to find out which buttonhole styles your machine is designed to sew. One-step buttonholes are not only faster than a four-step or manual buttonhole, they provide more consistent results because the buttonhole is actually formed by measuring the button itself. To make a fully automatic one-step buttonhole on a mechanical machine, set the pattern selector to the buttonhole icon. Set the stitch length and stitch width controls to the buttonhole indicators. The button is placed in the foot to determine buttonhole size. Some models stitch the buttonhole from bottom to top and others from top to bottom, so check your manual to determine how to do correct placement on the fabric. Engage the buttonhole lever. Sew the buttonhole. To make an automatic four-step buttonhole on a mechanical machine, set the pattern selector to step one of the process. Set the stitch length and width controls to the buttonhole indicators. Place the buttonhole foot on the machine. Mark the buttonhole on the fabric, then position the foot over the fabric. Sew the first step of the buttonhole. With the needle raised out of the fabric, turn the pattern selector to step two, then sew. When step two is complete, raise the needle out of the fabric and set the pattern selector for step three. When step three is sewn, raise the needle out of the fabric and select step four. Sew step four. Depending on the model of machine, the order of the four steps may vary, but the results will be the same. To sew a fully automatic one-step buttonhole on an electronic or computerized machine, select the buttonhole from the pattern selection. Place the buttonhole foot on the machine and then place the button in the foot to determine buttonhole size. Engage the machine's buttonhole lever. Position the foot on the fabric, then sew. The entire buttonhole will be sewn and on most models, we'll also sew a tie-off stitch to secure. Some machines offer a manual buttonhole feature, which means that buttonholes can be sewn in any length. The size of the buttonhole is not limited by the size of a buttonhole foot. Instead, a satin foot is used to sew the length you want. Buttonholes can be made more stable by adding cord. Hold the cord in a loop and place it on the extension at the back of the foot. 
Place the two ends of the cord into the grooves on the front of the foot. Hold the cords, then stitch the buttonhole. When finished, pull the cord loop into the buttonhole. Trim the loose ends, or use a large hand needle to bring them to the back of the fabric, then tie to secure. Buttonholes aren't just for buttons. Why not use them instead of grommets to make a shower curtain? Or sew several on a pillow, tote bag, or garment to create a path through which you can weave ribbon for added interest.